The Sherpy's Guide to the Lighthouse continues this week with part 2. My name is Ben, and in this video I'll cover shoddy counters, the importance of quick decision making, target prioritization, and some other situational strats. In the last video I covered 5 basic thingamajigs, so here we're going to continue the list with numero 6, shoddy counters. Currently, the most used special weapon type in the Crucible is the shotgun, and this list wouldn't be complete without some suggestions on how to counter El Matador. I'm currently compiling clips for a more in-depth, subclass specific guide on countering shotguns, but for the Trials of Osiris specific shotgunner, you can do one of three things. First, you can optimize your neutral game by maxing out your discipline and strength. You can do this by holding on to tier 10 to 12 capable armor. Here's some fun facts. Helmets max out at 65 points per attribute, gauntlets at 58, chest pieces at 86, boots at 79, and class items and ghosts at 35. If you come across armor or accessories approaching those numbers, hold on to them. Every class of Guardian has that one set of grenades that can one-hit KO targets or deal enough damage to force a retreat. If you're having trouble with shotgun bullies, simply reserve your grenades for when you're getting rushed, or avoid engagements by staying outside of shotgun range until they've recharged completely. On each one of my guardians I have a max discipline build, so that my grenades will recharge in as little as 25 seconds. Secondly, opt to use a shotgun yourself. Since patch 2 point death to snipers, I've opted to use shotguns unless at least two of my fire team members were running them. When I choose to snipe, I make sure to buddy up with one friendly so as not to get thralled. Lastly, use the last word. At close range and sometimes, depending on the weather outside, the last word performs surprisingly well at medium range. Is it inconsistent compared to pulse rifles, scout rifles, and other hand cannons? Yes, but against shotgunners closing gaps, it's a lifesaver. Take the time and learn how to use it, in PvE if you have to. Number 7. Be decisive. At some point during the trials run, you'll be the last guardian standing. For those last guardians standing, it is best to choose a course of action and do it quickly. If it means going in for a trade, so be it. If you're going to make a play with a super and push a revive, go for it. And or consider performing a tactical suicide <laughs> by jumping off the map. The important thing is to act quickly. This limits the enemy team's super buildup, because while you're playing cat and mouse, the enemy team will have three players recharging supers or farming special ammo which could be used to get first pick in three different rounds, potentially costing you the next three rounds. Don't let that happen. I should mention that if you're in a 2v1 scenario, your chances of getting a res or a kill are even better. I say this because it is better to engage two targets with half a mind to res their teammate and half a mind to kill you than it is to engage three targets with a full set of minds set on killing you. Be aggressive in those scenarios. Get froggy even, then jump somebody about it. Number 8. Tactical Stalling You will have noticed by now, putting tactical before a word makes it seem noteworthy. It's a tactical trick, don't fall for it. Where was I going with that? Oh yes. When you're in a 3v1 in your favor, consider stalling to build supers. While the enemy team is building toward 1, you're working toward 3 like I just explained. This could be risky, however, when facing an opponent that sweats. To avoid getting picked one by one, it may be better to engage a target before his or her super builds up, or they manage to get a pick without their super. This is where coordinated pinches come in handy. Pinching is a strategy used to divide the attention of single opponents, so that they can be dismantled with little risk to the home team. Competitive teams can effectively pinch more than one player, and it's a beautiful thing to witness. Generally though, while you're attempting to pinch a worthy solo opponent, they will be attempting to bait you through choke points. This is called funneling. Most skilled players will rotate around the map until they've obtained some positional advantage and attempt to force you and your teammates into 1v1 scenarios. Don't let them. If you've been 3v1 before, it's the result of an uncoordinated pinch. Let's look at this example. A popular positional advantage on the Burning Shrine is a spot called Outside Head Glitch. From here, a single player can safely cover two angles of attack with their primary, three angles of attack with a sniper. Don't be baited into rushing these spots alone. If you see a teammate already engaging the enemy, pick a different route and push aggressively, knowing that a single target won't be able to engage two or more assailants that are advancing at the same time from different angles. If you notice a teammate rushing without backup, call out for them to fall back until you're in position. And if you happen to be the one getting baited, 
Make a mental note to never repeat that mistake again. Number 10. Target Prioritization This is the ability to rank your opponents based on the threat that they pose and choosing to engage the most imminent threat first. You'll notice a lot of streamers do this during solo trials runs. When they're up against good teams that pinch properly, they'll rotate around the map until they can get a pick. This is because you can only prioritize targets when you have a positional advantage. Here's an example. Here, at this moment, I identified the fact that I have a positional disadvantage and ran to gain a better one. Also note that my buddy, sorry bud, <laughs> chose to hold a not so favorable spot and gets extremely schmamboozled. I want you to note three things about this second position that I'm in. First of all, all three opponents are within motion sensor range of me, or as I like to call it, thunderstrike range. Next, my focus shifts quickly between two targets, from one that was soon to get away to one that was more likely to rush. And finally, I use my surroundings to initiate three 1v1 engagements despite being surrounded. Most players have a panic response when things go sour in a trials run. You know the moment Shaxx yells, it's all up to you, Guardian. Or, more recently, don't choke, Guardian. <laughs> As if it's not bad enough. The most useful panic response I've cultivated from my time in trials is learning to identify areas of the map that grant positional advantages. Sometimes, at the moment that I become Last Guardian standing, I will already be at these positions, in which case I try not to give them up so easily. Other times, I will be at the worst possible position when my teammates go down. In these cases, my primary goal is to get outside of motion sensor range and rotate to the opposite side of the map. The best way to practice this, honestly, is in the 6v6 playlist. The more chaotic the game type, the better, because your encounter rate will be much higher than it would be in a 3v3. I'll dive into that and another related concept in a Slayer Mindset video that's coming up. But for now, that's it. If you'd like to share any tactics I didn't mention, let me know below. Lately, I've been running into more and more of you in the Crucible and I find it hilarious reading some of your kind words. And some of the clips you've been sending me are pretty impressive. If I don't respond right away, it's because I don't get notifications. So if you have a play on your mobile app you'd like to share, just do so via Twitter. Anyways, until then, God bless your faces and deuces!